Hundreds of years ago, present-day Joint Base Lewis McCord was home to the Nisqually tribe. Over the course of many years, settlers moved in and moved out the people who lived off the river and the land. Congressman Matthew Smith takes us inside the modern-day movement to buy that land back in an effort to keep the river and everything in it alive. I was always taught growing up that we protect 80 miles from the summit to the sea, from Mount Rainier to the uh, mouth of the Nisqually River right into the Puget Sound. This water is sacred for us. That mountain's sacred for us. To Quotma, that means don't forget the water. Long before Willie Frank III and I stood here, the Nisqually people lived in what his ancestors described as a paradise. There's so many salmon you could walk across the river on their backs. Those times are long gone. The tribe hasn't fished for chum the past two years. There's just not enough. And the Chinook, they're more common in hatcheries than this river. What was once a seven to eight month fishing season is now down to days as the species struggle to survive. This year, they finished fishing by Labor Day. I got hope. You know, we're not going to give up. We're going to keep fighting. So where does that hope come from? And why are we in a forest? It has a diameter of 20.6. This is part of a strategy playing out. The tribe teaming up with the land trust to save forest land. In this case, 2,200 acres, half the tribes, half the Nisqually land trusts, all of it going into a community forest. Yes, trees may be the answer to saving what's in this water. You know, the tribes that lived here since time immemorial, they understood those connections and they still understand those connections. And uh, they managed the landscape in a different way uh, to make sure that those connections remained healthy. And so there were still abundant salmon that were coming back and there were healthy forests and there were places to go gather and to hunt and to fish. The long story short goes like this. Older trees take less water, offering cooler passage for nearby salmon that are on the brink of extinction. In an era of climate change, every bit helps. It also means the tribe is regaining land that was taken away from them. Right now we are a checkerboard reservation. So what we try to do is we are always trying to buy our land back. There was a time that the Nisqually tribe was spread out across the entire watershed. As settlers arrived, they were forced to relocate. Later, a large chunk of their land was condemned to make room for Fort Lewis. Today, that's part of JBLM. But as Frank tells me, recent moves to buy back land isn't just about the property. It's about saving everything we can, from the mountain to the mouth of the watershed. And I always tell folks, I don't want to be the generation that points to a salmon. And this is what we used to catch in the Nisqually River 20 years ago. Tribes are always the, the managers of the resources. You know, and, and we have been since the beginning of time. You know, we've we protected this whole area here. And, you know, now it's time to, to get everybody else to understand to protect it. Reporting from Frank's Landing, I'm Matthew Smith, Cairo 7 News. And you can find all of our Western Washington Gets Real stories at Cairo7.com. Click on the Gets Real tab at the top of our homepage, and you'll be able to check out stories tackling everything from health to policing to education and their intersections with race and gender.